By the end of this lesson, you're going to have a ton of ideas to play over that backing track. Now, you can download that for free if you follow the link below. And it's just a bunch of chords that we need to know what key that's in so that we can craft lots of bass lines. So I'm going to start off explaining the chord progression, a little bit of the theory behind it, and then some timing stuff and how to just get all this together so that you can just make up bass lines with ease. There's quite a lot actually, so I'm going to go straight into it. So chord progression first, we have F minor. That's just the root note. Then it goes to a B flat minor. Then it's A flat major, you just say A flat. Back to the B flat minor. Even just playing those root notes, as they're called, along to the backing track is good enough for now. I'm hearing that rhythm, duh, duh, duh. So root notes, don't underestimate them. They sound great. Now, all of those three chords come from one key, and that key is F minor. And these are the notes that make up that scale, F natural minor scale. You'll see the notes are F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat and F. So there are four flats in that particular key. In that one octave shape there, we can actually do quite a lot with our root notes and connecting up the different root notes of the chord progression in a musical way. I'll, I'll show that now. That's a perfectly okay bass line there. What was I doing? Well, F first, because that's the root note of the first chord. And I'm really restricting myself to this one octave just for now, but just doing something um, musical to get me from the root note of F to B flat, and I need to hit B flat on beat one. If you know the shape really well under your fingers, you can just play any of those notes really, and it's gonna sound good going up there to the notes, but you could equally maybe go to the octave and descend till you hit that B flat. And rhythm wise, okay, so one, two, three, four, it's slow, it's 75 beats per minute. So at that speed, those are quarter notes, eighths are one and two and, and that's really what I was doing. But if I need to inject a bit more into it, I can do sixteenths which is one E and a two E and a... You know? And there, actually, I did something that you should avoid, which is from the B flat. I don't really want to land, this is going from B flat minor to the A flat chord. I really want to hit the, um, the root note of the chord on beat one. If I get there a bit too early, it doesn't sound so great. Let's build things up gradually. If you play a root, a five, and an octave, and you know, the root is just the lowest note of the chord, so that's on F minor, it's F. And if you know the notes of the scale, you can find all these other intervals. That's your fifths and your octaves and things like that. So just learn the pattern off by heart. It's one of the most common scales you're ever gonna encounter, the most common keys is a minor key. So learn this off by heart. And really know the intervals under your fingers. To find a fifth, you just start on the first note is number one, and you go up to five. An octave is the eighth note. And those notes are fantastic. I'm just doing the same pattern on an F, then on a B flat, first fret of the A string, then on an A flat, fourth fret of the E string. You'll find that any player that can do this instantly and well knows all the notes really well. So if you don't know your notes, this is a good opportunity to really get to learn them. If you understand what a key is, you're going from F in this scale and you're finishing on an F if you do one octave, 
and you're just going up the musical alphabet, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, sticking in the flats that we need. So you do have to remember, look, F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F. It does help to know the notes because then you can move around and get to different places. B flat there, B flat there on the sixth fret. You need to know different positions. Let's do root five octave now. The second time round, I don't know if you noticed, I, I, I removed notes, I was playing a bit too much. But it's worth making the point right now that if you have like decent tone and you play really simple notes but in time and with a bit of taste, that's really all you need to do. Don't try and overcomplicate things when you're jamming, improvising or, you know, writing bass lines. You don't need to, you can just play really simple things. One level beyond maybe the root five octave shape I just shown you, showed you is to do the arpeggio on, on each of the chords. So over the first one, F minor, we can play an F minor seven arpeggio. So that's just the root, the first note, first note, third note, fifth note, seven. One, three, five, seven. If you know the shape, very easy to find it. That's the first, that's the third, that's the fifth, and that's the flat seven. And there's your arpeggio with the octave. Lovely thing about that is if we shift across to the sixth fret where B flat is, it's a minor chord, so you can do the same thing. Down a tone, two frets, you're on the A flat. This is, um, let's play seventh arpeggios. We don't need to play everything within that arpeggio in our bass line, but we, we can use these as choices, okay? So this is A flat major seven. Back to B flat minor seven. Play this first time round, I'll do it like an exercise, just playing the arpeggio over each chord. And then the second time round, I'll probably do less, but, but um, every now and again use some of those notes altogether. There are so many things you can do, it's quite mind-boggling. I just went, um, that's just going up the arpeggio. But this time I'm trying to make it sound a bit more like a bass line by sticking to that groove that I seem to be sticking to in this lesson. The, um, the drums, are, the kick drum is doing that, so I'm, I'm, I'm heading towards that. Then I went to the B flat minor chord. I think that time round I just kept it simple. So there's the A-flat major 7, or the A-flat major chord. We've got the octave there. And this is a really important point, and bass players will, will know this, is that on any chord you need to know the intervals underneath it. So in the chord that you're in. So in A-flat, there's the octave. And in this case, it's, it's a major 7th that fits underneath that. And I know it's right next door to that octave. One fret away. I think I did that. So it's really just the root 5 octave pattern from before, but with the 7th in. So on the F minor and the B flat minor chords, it would be oct root 5 octave. This is just one way of thinking about it. And the minor 7th is two frets away from the octave or from the root. And on the B flat, see, you've got root 5 octave. Go two frets down from the octave, you've got that flat 7. You can do that down the octave. Okay, so let me do that now. I'm going to do uh, this. I'm going to do that pattern. So this is an F. I'm shifting to the 8th fret to do this because I can't do this on the F because I don't have an E flat. 
So there's the F. And I'm going down to the E flat, and I'm really thinking about that as flat seven. No, that shape works. And that's the flat three. Anyway, this pattern, I've just learned over the years that this pattern fits over a minor chord, right? So let's explore that. Okay, I got a bit more, a bit fancier at the end there, but I started just doing the pattern I showed you. B flat minor seven, then A flat. It's a major, right? So I've got to do the major seven. The minor seventh shape wouldn't work over that chord. Then I went. There I'm just using something that you can think of in two different ways. We're in the key of F minor. So the notes I told you about earlier, F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F, those are the notes of the key that we're in now. I've so far just shown you that in the one octave pattern here, but really and truly you need to be able to break out of that and play across the whole neck. So when I'm doing something like this, and there are two ways of thinking about this. I'm on the B flat minor chord in this little example here. If I start on B flat and play all the notes of F natural minor, I'll have B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F, G, A flat, and then B flat. I'm just playing B flat, but using the notes of F natural minor. Now what that actually gives you is a mode, and I don't know if you've heard of modes. If you've watched my channel before, then you definitely have, because I, I talk about them a lot. And what I do, there's two ways of thinking about it. One is to go, right, I'm on B flat and I'm playing the notes of F natural minor. And the other way is to think I'm on B flat, that means we're playing B flat Dorian. Let's take it chord by chord and I'll explain it as I go. So on the F minor chord, we have that set of notes, that's F natural minor. We have that set of notes that fits over the F minor chord. And in fact, the chord came from that set of notes because, you know, if you get the one, three, five, and seven notes and play them together, you get a chord. So the chord and the scale notes fit together like a glove. And that's the case over F. But when you go to B flat, well, the same thing applies. We've now got B flat to B flat using the notes of F natural minor. But that is actually a mode. So is the F, by the way, it's called F Aeolian. When we start an F natural minor scale there on the fourth note, and we play the notes up like this, we get a Dorian mode. So that's B flat Dorian. If you get the triad from that, that's just where you get the first, third, and fifth notes of whatever scale or mode you're playing. To get the first, third, and fifth of that, you get a minor triad. Put a seventh in, well then you have that shape. So all of these things fit together. That's why I really like it, and I like knowing it from whatever route you're on, is its ultimate freedom. So I could go... All those notes fit also. I mean, I'm showing you a lot of patterns that I personally use. I think you'll find your own if you explore this like I've done. Root, flat third, flat seven. I also really know this pattern. Do that up the octave. There's a B flat on the 13th fret of the A string. And since the F minor chord is a minor chord, we can do that same pattern on an F. I'm not wanting you or expecting you to memorize and learn all this stuff right now. I'm just demonstrating some of the things that you find when you explore this. When we go to that A flat major chord, that's built from a major scale. F natural minor, A flat major, they're related, they contain the same notes. 
So if I um, now play using all the ideas I've given you up to now, I'll explain it when I, when I stop. But there's one more thing I want to show you after that, but check this out. There I'm not restricting myself, I'm just doing whatever I like. And a couple of little highlights, I did this. Okay, so that's F. And I just went up the octave and just played the first three notes of the scale, F, G, A flat. And then I went to B flat and just did the same idea. So what are the notes? B flat, C, D flat. A flat, A flat, B flat, C. That's major there. This is minor. The F was minor as well. I'd like to finish on fills, and I think there's a special approach you can take with fills if you're playing in one key. And that's to use the pentatonic and blues scale. So F minor pentatonic. It's a very simple scale. Remove the second and sixth notes from the key, from the key of F natural minor, and you get a minor pentatonic scale. And you get some shapes of it going across the neck like this. It's great for fills, it's great for solos, it's great for bass lines. If you add a flat five, which is this note, technically a C flat, sounds really good. You can actually make bass lines up using just that scale. That was just pentatonic notes, just hitting the roots each time that I was supposed to hit. So bass line riffs, they sound good with that. As to fills, like this. You know, all that. Just pentatonic, a little bit of blues. Now, of course, yeah, I just started here and I ended up here and I was doing some fancy techniques. So if you're sitting there going, well, I can't do that yet. Yeah, that's fine. At least you will then know that you have a set of shapes in this particular example, minor pentatonic shapes. And it's up to you just to sit down and get your fingers moving in such a way that you can you can do this. So that's technique practice. So I, I, I've done a lot of that of knowing the pentatonic shapes, but just trying to incorporate these techniques. These are expressive techniques like hammer-ons, pull-offs, slides and all that kind of stuff. It, it tends to make the, the scale sound a bit less like a scale and more like music. So it's up to you to sit down and learn these patterns and where your notes are. There's an F there. There's an F here. One here. Everywhere I just played, I just played the same pattern, starting on my first finger. So you just need to explore and just sit down and do a bit of this every day, just learning your scales and your shapes. Download the backing track, download the PDF with some of those shapes. Start really, really, really simply if you need to, just with root notes, then connect up some of those root notes with the notes of the scale, then perhaps get the root five octave, you know, watch the lesson again if you need to, just to add layer upon layer. And sooner or later, you, you'll see, you know, some of the things I'm talking about, you can use it in your own playing. If you've got any questions, do let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next lesson.